The moment you realize you can't stand what you're standing on. At Lowe's, we have all the latest floor styles for any room at the prices you'll love. Get Shaw Matrix Luxury Vinyl Plank, now $179 a square foot. Introducing E-Trade Personalized Investments. Professionally managed portfolios customized to help meet your financial goals. You'll know what you're invested in and how it's performing. So you can spend more time floating about on your inflatable swan. Welcome back to the Stade de Cross Castel in Northwest France. A big day today for US women's youth soccer. It is a U20 final group stage matchup against the group leader Spain. I'm joined by Kindra D. St. Alban. Kindra, a much more improved performance against Paraguay. What do we have to see today from the U.S. to help them move on? Well, they got to hope to carry that momentum, that confidence in that game against Paraguay because a disappointing loss to open the tournament against Japan. So this is a side that Yika Klimkova is going to be excited about. She's excited about this matchup today. Really a must-win game for this U.S. team to guarantee their spot in the quarterfinals. Spain, the European champions, they won that roughly a year ago at this very same stage. They are top of the table, but could conceivably drop to third place. That's how tight it is coming into today's final round action in Group C. Spain already beaten Paraguay and Japan. Simply avoiding the feet today will see them moving on to the knockout stages of the U20 Women's World Cup for the US. They need a victory. You look at that other group matchup. Japan expected to get the win. 
This a very strong starting lineup once again for Spain today. Well, and I'm going to keep an eye on number eight, Patricia Guijarro. She had a hat trick against Paraguay and an assist. She's played every minute of this tournament, wears the captain's armband, really pulls the string in that central midfield role. If she's not scoring, she's assisting. She's getting her teammates involved. Five goals in the European U19 Championship. So she is a key piece to this Spain team. One of six Spanish players named to the team of the tournament in those European Championships at this stage, last campaign. This is the Spanish side that has been ever improving under Pedro Lopez. Two years ago, it was a quarter-final position, and they want to go one further. The U.S. standing in the way, and now the last remaining team holding the flag for CONCACAF. Haiti and Mexico crashing out. Mexico, disastrous fashion yesterday. Klimkova was very upbeat when we spoke to her a couple of days ago. She felt the team responded well to that opening game defeat. Even in that one, she saw a lot of positives. But this, a much stiffer test today. Our match referee today, Anna Marie Cayley from New Zealand. The US captain by Samantha Hyatt. The defender, much improved defensive performance, didn't give up many chances at all in that Paraguay match. And it's just one change from the side to beat Paraguay by six goals to nil. Well, and the other thing to keep an eye on is the three yellow cards, Gurma, DeMello, and Jalen Howell, all on yellows. That it's going to be very important that the U.S. does advance out of this group. But Savannah DeMello, a hat-trick in their match against Paraguay. Coach Klimkova was very excited for her. She's normally the creator, but instead she was the one scoring the goals, and deservedly so, and a massive improvement in that second match compared to the first one against Japan. And I think it was the energy from that last 15 minutes against Japan that carried over into that Paraguay win. Pedro Lopez, three years in charge. It was a 12-year gap for appearances in the U-20 World Cup for Spain. They returned two years ago and lost to North Korea as did the U.S. in the next round. And now they've already shown they have the ability to beat the best. Some of the players available from the bench for either coach. So much experience on that U.S. side. You look at that roster and some of those names that could come off the bench for the United States. So if they have to go to that bench early, it's going to be important. It is the U.S. who kick things off, attacking from left to right, looking to keep alive the hopes of staying in the U-20 Women's World Cup. And immediately on the front foot here, good running behind from Sophia Smith. It was a quick throw-in on that side from Ashley Sanchez. What are some of the things you want to see from the U.S. early on in this game against the team that are currently sitting in top position in the group? Well, we've heard about the high press that the United States likes to play. They want to win that ball in the defensive third of the field for Spain. And look at right away where they are starting, where they are putting their high line of pressure. But the problem is if they get it broken down like that, then Spain can go right away the other way in that 4-3-3 on transition. So I think the United States is going to have to get on the front foot early, put some pressure on, win that ball in the defensive third of the field for Spain, much closer and easier to score goals when you're already that high up the pitch. And anybody that's watched the first two games from Spain, very adept at playing out of the back, but Ivka Klimkova telling us a couple of days ago, saying they're also quite adept at going longer when they need to. Goalkeeper closed down. Ball playing out wide for Manaya. And now a bit of space opening up on this left-hand side for Ivan Navarro. Navarro trying to play it inside, and it's been played defensively from the U.S., but already seeing how good technically the Spanish are in possession. When it started with that long ball from the goalkeeper out to the outside, found some space on the flank, and a good first touch cuts it inside, and they're going the other way. Hyatt had to slide over defensively. So, yes, Spain and on the attack early. No problem going direct if they need to. Spain winning possession back, of course. U.S. fans will have one eye on that other game as well. Japan taking on Paraguay. Final group matches, as always, taking place at the exact same time. I wonder if Klimkova has one of her 
assistant coaches keeping an eye on that one. US really helping the goal differential. That will be the first tiebreaker if teams are level on points. Again, the US electing to try press initially. The ball goes back for Katakol. And there is the pressure. And the US winning it back well. Two inside the area. The ball's going to fall back to the edge of the box. Low range here. Good goalkeeping. There's a stinging shot from Via Corta. Good goalkeeping from Kata. Again, forcing that turnover of Via Corta. Beautiful strike there. Yes, the having some success here early on with it. But Spain not shying away from their game plan. And they break through this time. Navarro. Navarro running at Hyatt. Still Eva Navarro. Hyatt just bodying up and does very well. Now she's going to try play out and falls nicely for her central defensive partner, Girma. It's going to be interesting contrast, isn't it? The US trying to press. Spain look intent on trying to play through that press. Well, and Kiara Pickett gets really high up the field on the right side. We've already seen it out in the right there, number 13. And that is why we've seen so much action already in the back from Hyatt. She's had to slide over and cover. So when the U.S. presses and Pickett gets up, Spain easily transitioning out, trying to possess that ball and go the other way. So the back line and, and Gurma and Hyatt are going to have to be on their game today, those two center backs. Kujavis, that time almost getting caught in possession. It ends up at the feet of Lucia Rodriguez. Oh, well back uh, Laurel Ivory, not the most convincing of clearances. I think everybody was impressed with how Spain dispatched of Japan. Paraguay have been the lesser of the teams, should I say, in Group C so far. They've struggled in both of their matchups, so Japan expected to bounce back and get the win today, although stranger things have happened in World Cups in the past. Nice flick in behind for Navarro again. This has been interesting on this U.S. right-hand side. Nice ball pulled back to Egrola. Rodriguez, that one goes over the top. Navarro in a lot of space. Navarro tries to get a cross in, and well, the U.S. do well to clear. One of those instances that Yitka Klimkova talked about, the longer service from the Spanish. And it almost worked out. Currently, as it stands, the U.S. have dropped in the standings. That's because, as expected, Japan have taken the lead early. I think privately, Klimkova, the coach, would have been saying, we expect Japan to get the victory. So perhaps not as much looking at that game in terms of getting your own work done here on the field. They get a win here today, they're in. They don't have to worry about what goals are scored in that Japan-Paraguay game. That ball again playing through from Navarro all the way through for Laurel Ivory. We just got a shot of Pina up top, number 20, the youngster, just turned 17 years old yesterday, one of the youngest players on this squad. And, and to play with FC Barcelona, she's going to be a fun one to watch. Hasn't played since the first match against Paraguay. A real spark for them up top in that 4-3-3 for Spain. She got a goal in that one as well, but yeah, just 17 years of age. What are you doing at 17, Kendra? Not this. <laughs> it's just amazing to see some of the talent, and I think it really helps them out, the fact that they all play in Spain. They all play professionally in leagues in Spain, 12 of them in the top division. And all the teams playing a very similar style in Spain as well, so coming together quickly. Guijara, who's a real linchpin in the middle of midfield, not just in possession, but as a goal scorer as well. Guijara tries for that little flick in behind. Spain on the front foot again here. And across all the way through, and that one could have deflected anywhere, and I'll pick it. And it does fall for Guijara. She's down the bottom corner. 
And Spain capitalising on a fast start. They have the opening goal. This entire sequence started just outside the 18-yard box, about 22 yards out, and it was the footwork of Giharo. She drew four United States players on top of the box. She found Pina on a through ball, and then she flicked it to the outside, comes back in, and not a good clearance by Howell. Unlucky there, but falls right to the foot of Gihara. She doesn't waste any time. Gihara again with her fourth goal of the tournament. Nice little clean first touch. Gets the second one out in front. Picks out her corner and beats Laurel Ivory. But a missed clearance there. A rarity from Howell just inside the 18-yard box in Spain up early. Absolutely no chance for Ivory and goal. That was a pinpoint finish. And you mentioned earlier, came to five goals in the European Championships as well. And the FC Barcelona, full international, has played a part so far in this tournament. And the US, well, not the best start in either game for them today. Pickett trying to control that one. It was good defensive play by Navarro. And another ball in behind. This time, the flag does go up against Claudia Pina. Well, Coach Klimkova has talked about and praised this team for their chemistry, their togetherness, their willingness to work for each other, and they're going to have to do it here today down early in this match in the eighth, ninth minute. This is where you really show your character and your resolve in a group game that is such important. Nice turn here and a chance to run at the Spanish back four, and that ball flashing all the way across. A good attacking approach play from Sophia Smith, but unable to trouble Kata. It wasn't the greatest of clearances. I'll take nothing away from Guijara. One of the early candidates for player of the tournament, how she's played. And that for her injured teammate. Natale who injured after the first matchup, so nice to see that as well. You could see the combination play though that started just outside the 18-yard box with the Spain team. That togetherness, you talk about the style of play, the familiarity, the runs off the ball, just knowing when your teammate is going to be making that run to get in behind. Part of the reason they've had such success. We'll see Rodriguez allowing that one to run through for Pujadas. And, well, Rodriguez, that wasn't total football from the Spanish as they just blast that one out of play for the U.S. throw in the U.S. Looking to gain some kind of possession here. And Cross coming in again, looking for Sophia Smith. And again, that longer service over the top. Navarro in the clear and in behind picket. Real trouble for the U.S. here. Navarro gets a cross in, and it was good help defensively, but exactly what Yitka Klimkov had talked about. The ball over the top, and the U.S. looked a little bit short defensively for a moment. Well, I think they're just trying to push up. They're trying to get numbers forward and get in on the attack, put that high pressure. But, yeah, that ball over the top is... The United States is going to have to be aware of that. He lays it back across the box to find a teammate there, Navarro. But Gurma had it covered. Well, Marco Pujalas has been very comfortable in possession so far. Taking it out of the back. Playing that ball into midfield to Bonmati. You can hear Pedro Lopez on the line. He's an animated coach. Well, he certainly built a team with an identity over the last couple of years. Lucia Rodriguez on the set piece for the Spanish. This one's going to travel all the way through as well. He handled the goal scorer. Anaya. Well defended initially, but the U.S. can keep it in play, and the Spanish will maintain possession. Carmen Manayo and plays a uh, club soccer at Atletico Madrid. Nice play again, getting the ball out wide onto that right-hand side. 
from the US on the back foot again here. Plenty of options inside the area, and Navarro was trying to make contact with it. Well, Mati, and again at the US, stranded defensively, and that one flashing just over the cross by Egarola. Not closed down quickly enough, and the US struggling here. Well, right here, Howell makes a nice little tackle on the first play, but again, they find some space on top of the box. And it's Egarola stepping up into the space that's been vacated by her teammates, not afraid to take a strike with the left there. Need pressure on the ball on top of the 18 if the United States. Guillermo trying to play it out. The U.S. like the Spanish at the other end. Trying to maintain possession. Nice ball forward. There was a little bit of space for a moment for the U.S. Again, Smith is the intended target, but Pujales comes across, and he defends that very well. Well, just like the U.S. is aware who's dangerous for Spain, I guarantee the defenders and the midfielders for Spain have their eye on Sophia Smith. She's looked really good in this tournament, so dangerous with that pace, can get in on the back shoulder, make those runs, take players on 1v1, as we saw against Paraguay. Amir is coming forward again. That effort flashing a couple of yards wide. Tight space. Tries to create an opportunity for herself. That's Demello getting in on the attack once again. Well, she got the hat trick in the last match against Paraguay. So has shown her goal scoring instinct so far. Again, it's a long ball targeting. The U.S. right-hand side this time, the onside flag goes up against Navarro, but you get the sense that's something that Yitka Klimkova is going to have to address sooner rather than later. And there's so much pace and athleticism on this U.S. side. You could see that back line. Look at the positioning, though, the track and back here. Pick it. She's reading it well, but yes, trying to break that back line. Navarro making the run, getting out wide, finding that space. That was a great camera angle to show, though, how Pickett is keeping an eye on that long ball and positioning her body to track back and defend. Oh, trying to play it forward. One back quickly by the Spaniards. Guijaro, lovely switch of the play. Pina pushing forward again. Garcia moving out to that right-hand side. A little dummy allowing that one to go through for Navarro. who's seen a lot of the ball so far. That one takes a deflection. And again, it's into the hands of Laurel Ivory. Eva! Eva! They seem to have targeted that right-hand side of the U.S. defense so far. A little bit too much time and space on the ball in midfield for Spain right now. Being able to pick out the width, being able to switch the field. And a little bit more pressure on the ball centrally to eliminate some of those through balls and those balls in. And the U.S. three times champions at this level in the World Cup. For so long, the flag bearers of the level at this World Cup, but right now, as it stands, they'd be going out at the group stages. So plenty of time left here in Northwest France for the U.S. to get back into it. That's exactly what they're trying to do here. Nice ball out wide for Erin Gilroy. Gilroy comes in on a right foot. De Mello. Nice old touch back. Al plays it out wide for Ashley Sanchez. Sanchez into the area, but a lot more Spanish jerseys in there and defended comfortably. Garcia had three goals at the last Women's U20 World Cup. Navarro, who's been a handful so far. Pina, the youngster. Pina goes for goal. And again, it's a save for Ivory. I say youngster, they're all youngsters, but... Pina even more so. Well, and Ivory goes from a Paraguay game where I think there was maybe one shot on goal to facing a Spain side that is just going to be peppering. Peppering her. She's going to have to be on her game. As we can already see the attack for Spain. On that game, Kendra, would have Kim as the coach learned that much given Paraguay haven't been that strong in opposition? Well, I still think it's about taking advantage of your opportunities. you got to step on an opponent that you think you have the ability to. They knew they were going to need games. Unfortunately for Paraguay, I think every team in this group, Spain, USA, Japan, are looking at them as the opponent they can 
gain some goals against for that goal differential. So they did what they needed to do. Good run forward here from Sanchez. A lot of space to get across in. Not a bad delivery either, but and defending again from the Spanish. Pina, the 17-year-old. He's got one goal in the tournament so far, coming in the opening matchup. That was a 4 1 victory for the Spanish against Paraguay. And the much more impressive performance was getting that win over Japan in game two. And we see Rodriguez trying to play it forward. That one takes a deflection off a US player. So Spain will maintain it. And you're going to look at Pedro Lopez, the man you've been hearing in the background. Again, space for Guijaro to exploit going forward. Not much contact there, but the foul goes against Jalen Howe. She just had too much time and space once again. I mean, you saw that ball just threaded through right through the middle. And Guijaro had time and space to turn, take a few touches, draws the foul here. Carmen Manayo, the Atletico Madrid left back over this one, looking for a left footed delivery. And the Spanish sending some of the defenders forward here as well. Left footed delivery towards our far post area. And the US, not convincing initially, but finally get the ball clear out as far as Aaron Gilroy. Confirmation Japan have got a second goal. Not to be too disrespectful to Paraguay, but I think it's safe to say Japan are now on the way to joining Spain with six points. <laughs> Sophia Smith plays that ball back for Via Corta, opening up on a left foot, goes for goal! What a hit and what a save. <laughs> Catalina called a goalkeeper, got across so very well, but denied US the level and goal. Again, just creating space for herself. Via Corta, I haven't seen much offense from her in the first two matches, but she finds some time and space, a nice little first two touches there with the left foot. Two nice shots on frame from her so far in this match. Well, that's as good a save as we've seen so far in the World Cup. Better stuff from the U.S. Corner kick delivery and two players attacking that near post area. Pickett sending it back in. The goalkeeper coming out, gets a strong fist to it. And now the counter-attack might be on for the Spanish. Garcia. She is a real goal-scoring threat. Nice ball out wide again for Navarro, who again is looking to be direct. Still Navarro. And also a push in the back. Pina went down, looks towards the referee. And the referee was having none of it. And break the other way for Gilroy. Gilroy comes inside. Nice bit of skill. Still Gilroy. Still Gilroy goes for goal. And that one flashes a couple of yards wide. And this could end up being this kind of game from one end of the field to the other. But Gilroy gets the ball at pace, takes a couple nice long touches, cuts it inside with the outside of the right, gets it on the left right there. She beat two players down that left side. You really want to force Kata into a save on that one from such close range. But a good take by Gilroy. If it does become this kind of open game, end-to-end -end stuff, who does that favor in terms of style of play man well the width that Spain has been using on this near side right now I think they found some opportunities there to advance and go out but both teams so athletic so pacey so technical on the ball it's really gonna be about who finishes those opportunities right there I mean if you're Gilroy you put that one on frame test the keepers I think that's who's gonna be busy today is the goalkeepers it might, be, that one down. it might be about whose legs are freshest. 
from the first two matches because it's going to be a lot of pace, a lot of running. Here's that save again from Kata. Look at that. Completely outstretched with a right hand coming across the body. Watches it go wide. Tremendous save. Again, the Spanish setting up to play out of the back. Roll back for Kata. Closed down by Smith. That one coming off the outside of a right foot. And again, good football. Well, the U.S. now have possession going back through the defenders. Pal. Possession won back by Manayo. Navarro was looking for it on that left-hand side, but just behind the left winger. Who's been arguably the biggest threat so far for the Spanish going forward. Just a reminder, with that Japan result, a draw would not be enough for the U.S. But a victory, it wouldn't matter by how many goals would see them jump above Spain in the standings because of that goal difference that they really padded in the victory against Paraguay. So for the U.S., it's simply win and you're in. Navarro, Navarro. Well blocked defensively. Manaya, nice left-footed delivery. Pina, trying to get on that second ball. And once again, the U.S. taking no chances as that one's knocked out of play. The captain, Sam Hyatt, waiting just a moment there to see if Ivory had time to come off her line. Instead, has to make a big clearance. But we saw in the prior play, Pickett with the first defending, Hyatt with the second defending. I think that second defender is going to be really important in this game against Spain today as they continue to press offensively. Alexandri. And good pressure again from Sophia Smith, who's been tireless so far. Not an easy task trying to dispossess these Spanish defenders. Manaya trying to create a yellow space again. Not just knocking it anywhere, going back for Alexandri. Kata. No flick in the U.S. on the second ball. They've had a couple of chances, the U.S. Almost had a handball. The referee was well positioned. But Matthew was the player involved. We'll see Garcia. I played more centrally at times earlier in the tournament, Garcia. Navarro. Pujalas. Navarro's Egarola. And now a chance for the U.S. to break, perhaps, but good read defensively by Egarola. There was options further forward for DeMello when she had possession. Space off her left shoulder there. Had Gilroy making that run on the left side. She went back into pressure centrally. The Spanish in that European Championship win last summer. They pick up one defeat. That was to Germany, who've looked very impressive so far in the tournament. Guijano, it opens up again for Guijano. That's a very good effort. Almost goal number five in the tournament. That one just over. One here, a perfect example. She doesn't meet, need much space to create a chance for herself. Two touches again outside of the foot. Sets herself up perfectly. The U.S. is going to have to be very wary of her in midfield. Stepping to pressure the ball when she's 22, 25 yards out. <laughs> Not afraid to take that shot. One of the best players in the tournament so far for you? So far, because I think she's really done it all as far as making the runs, getting on the attack, finding her teammates, and work right defensively as well. The reason why she's wearing that captain's armband. Probably one of the easier questions that I'll pose to you today. 
keep throwing them at me. <laughs> Going back to Egarola. And again, that space opening up. And again, a lot of width here on this left hand side for Navarro. Good defending that time by Yara Pickett. Who hasn't shied away from her defensive responsibilities. Scrappy in the middle of midfield from both teams right now. Mewes is trying to gain a footing here. Alessandri playing it into midfield, and that one played beyond. Can the US take advantage? Two Spanish defenders covering. Canta. Well, that was good play from Pick. It gets there ahead of Nevada this time. Long played in behind, a lot of space again. Garcia, that's a strong challenge. Good defending from Leo Girma. When you go to ground as a defender, you have to win the ball, and that's exactly what she did. We're going to see a lot of those foot races and the space on the wings. Girma knew she had to get to that ball first. Nice ball in behind again. It was Guijardo again looking for Navarro. And those two have been a real threat. Guijardo again they drop off and Guijardo gets the shot off and Ivory with the save but the US almost tentative to go at Guijardo what do you can see Sam Hyatt is the one who has to step there Villacorta and Howell trying to maintain some pressure and composure in the midfield so many numbers coming through the middle of the field from Spain it's been a tough task so far here, 30 minutes in. Bonmati. Mike for Angarola. Again, Guijardo. Again, Navarro. A lot of space. Navarro tries to get it across. And luckily for the U.S., Navarro's been wasteful with possession in those wide areas. Look at how wide she's staying. She's forcing Pickett to make a decision, pinch in and help defensively with her central defenders or stay wide and create a large gap to track Navarro on the wing. What are some of the adjustments the U.S. can make to nullify that threat on that left? Well, I think it really comes back to pressure in the midfield because then those balls can't be serviced to the wings to find those spaces. It's a challenge. It's not easy because clearly Guijarro, Navarro, Egarola, regardless of who's coming out of that midfield, They've done so well early in this match to create problems. But if they can eliminate the pass to the wing, that's going to gonna help the United States. And it's not just simply on the right back picket. He's been left Absolutely isolated not. on a yeah, number of occasions. She's one of the best 1v1 defenders at this age in the world. She is best when a player, I believe, is facing up at her. But there's just it's just a challenge so far. On the turn, another shot on goal. Cato with a good save. <laughs> Sophia Smith, first real chance for her to go for goal. Wasn't a bad effort. Took a deflection on the way through. A lot of traffic in front. That's a good take by Smith. Virma <laughs> going back for Cato, who made that very big save. Denying Via Corta. The Mello, Smith. And again, possession given away right at the edge of the area. Von Mante has it back for Spain. Throw and taking quickly again by Pickett, looking for Ashley Sanchez down the right hand side. The US will maintain possession. No, no, holding on to that one, making sure that there wasn't going to be a break from Ashley Sanchez. Trying to drag it back and play as well, just see if the, the uh, linesman missed it, lineswoman. Oh, 
Nice play from Smith, looking for Sanchez. Sanchez, a little bit of space to get a cross in. And again, not too many options for the US, and again, it's well defended. Good play from Sam Hyatt, the captain. Pina dropping a little bit deeper to get on it. Quijano. And here the shout from the US bench keeper with a back to goal. Easier said than done so far with the space Navarro has found herself in. And she is again, and there is good defending from Pickett. As you quite rightly pointed out just a moment ago. Very quick at closing down the space. Back for Pujas. Rodriguez. Again, a ball out wide for Nevada. How many times have we said that in the first half so far? Nevada with a little chip in behind. And it goes through for Ivory. It was Pina, the intended target. And that was good defending in midfield. You had two players stepping up to the ball, passing off the midfielder with lots of pressure on the ball that time. But Spain just so good on the ball, under pressure, in tight spaces, still trying to find and able to find Navarro with the space on the wing. Lamello with the ball out wide for Erin Gilroy. Gilroy with a good run just behind Sophia Smith. A couple of good runs in this first 25 minutes so far from Gilroy. That was good defensive play from Hal to dispossess the ever dangerous Guijaro. Nice turn from Pina. A lot of space on the far side now for Lucia Garcia. And you see Garcia met with a very strong challenge from Isabel Rodriguez. That's a really good piece of defending there. Garcia is trying to face her up. She keeps an eye on the ball. Rihanna Villacorta plays it forward, looking for Demello. Demello initially looked like she was going to go back with it, instead turns and goes forward. Nice ball for Gilroy, the cross towards the far post. Sanchez. Another chance to get a delivery in. Sanchez, little chip, and Kata almost let that one go through her hands, and she rubs her hands against the uniform. And Sanchez serves this ball over, not quite far enough away from the keeper, but still ends up nearly being dangerous. The U.S. had a couple numbers in the box. If Sanchez can pull that ball out a little bit, Gilroy was making that run on the back post. All for looking for Pina, who hasn't had much change so far out of the U.S. centre-backs. Right, and Germa doing a good job. And that one coming off Rodriguez as the U.S. try play out of the back. A reminder, as it stands, the U.S. would be going out of the U-20 World Cup. That's because Japan a leading against Paraguay. 2-0 last we heard. I don't think Yitka Klimkova was coming into this one expecting favors from elsewhere. For Spain, a point is good enough here. Right now, they're on the way to three, and they're coming forward again. Now, Garcia has now switched onto this left-hand side. 
Garcia pulls it back for Guijaro again from distance. Never shy about pulling the trigger. And that one lasted well over. And fortunately for the U.S. on that one, because this one, Guijaro steps up once again into that space. But good ball movement leading up to it from Spain. Putting themselves in a good position to receive the ball, find the open space on the wings. As you stated, Garcia has now switched over here to the left. From what you've seen so far, Kendra, have the U.S. done enough to deserve more from this game so far? I don't think so. I think Spain has had the run of play. They've created the more dangerous opportunities. Pina with another chance. Ivory gets down sharply to a left-hand pose to make a very good save. But you can never count the United States out. I mean, that is the thing you will always get from the United States side is that competitive nature aside from just the ability and the willingness to work for each other. A lot of games still left here. Well, this one looks like a, a bit of a training ground routine. The U.S. look ready for it. Garcia, Alessandri, Guijaro were all setting up at the edge of the area. Now it's going to go short instead, and the short corner working. The pullback, Guijaro, and almost a second goal. Still a chance, and that one blasted over. But excellent corner kick routine, and the U.S. looking to escape that one. Well, Spain has served it in on nearly every corner kick in this tournament so far. Instead, they go short and pass it around outside the 18. And a good save off the near post from Sanchez. Tough to tell from that angle if it was going wide or not, but she does her job on that post. Kicking it clear. And Rodriguez strikes it well over the crossbar. On the Spanish side, it's serving notice perhaps that in the years to come, this will be a force to be reckoned with at the full national team level as well. I think Pedro Lopez has this team going in the right direction. He took over just three years ago in 2015, but he was also the U-17 coach, so you know he's had a lot of these players coming through under his system. Katha got very lucky there. Closed down quickly by Ashley Sanchez, and a little bit unlucky for the U.S. That one could have gone anywhere. Bonuati. He loses out, but the referee's whistle will save the Spanish midfielder. Is it a worry, Kinder, for CONCACAF that we've seen some struggles in this U-20 World Cup? Well, I think the gap is closing. I think the fact that Mexico has gone out in yesterday's match and a really poor performance from them after looking good and... Coach Cuellar feeling like this was one of his best squads, could have reached the semifinal, and then losing in the fashion they did to a really, really good England side. I do think the gap is closing between CONCACAF and the other regions. Less than a year away from the Women's World Cup. Next summer in France, a tournament you can see on Fox Sports. The U.S. will go in looking to defend their crown. And what a squad they have. I mean, watching some of the, the tournament of nations, the talent on this senior team. Never easy to defend a World Cup crown. Just ask Germany this summer on the men's side of things. Very true. You have a target on your back for sure. Antonio Bonmati on a set piece here for the Spaniards. On the bad delivery again. You hear the shout of away. It is an away. It's over the line. And Spain have the second goal. Ivory got a hand to it, but just couldn't keep it out. Things go from bad to worse for the U.S. And a ball in. A very direct ball in over the top. Well defended on the first one, but drops right to the foot of Garcia. Right there, they've got their touch tight on their mark. And Via Corta tracking in behind. But instead, it falls right kindly to the foot of Garcia. So much traffic inside that box, and Ivory can't get her hands on it cleanly. And it trickles in for the second goal for Spain just before the half. 
But that direct ball in over the top, you can't get any more direct than that. So many numbers inside the box. Three goals in the 2016 edition in Papua New Guinea for Lucia Garcia, and she's off the mark here. And the U.S. with a mountain to climb now. As it stands, a draw would not be good enough because of results elsewhere. Pujales. Well, that man has to be happy with what he's seen from his team so far. He's not resting on his laurels, no. though. I mean, he still looks very intent. He knows his squad is at 2-0 before the half here. But this is also a United States team that is capable of putting a lot of goals up, creating a lot of offense. You wonder what changes will be made at halftime from Yuka Klimkova. The U.S. has to be aggressive in the second half. The issue, of course, the Spanish side has showed they're very adept at attacking space in behind if gaps are left. Here they are in possession again. Not about to sit back. Garcia. Monogay Paul Gajardo is going to try and chase this one. That almost kept it in. Well, we wondered coming in, the Spaniards as the European champions. Just exactly how good they are. I think they've shown us all that the real deal. <laughs> Garcia, that one just runs out of play. Pick it inside for Via Corta. Ashley Sanchez forced back. One of the areas that the U.S. wants Sanchez in possession gives the ball away cheaply as well for Manaya. Japan have a third first half goal against Paraguay. Pujales. Possession won back by Mia Corte in the middle of midfield. The goal before half time would make it a little bit more easy to go into that second half for the U.S. You can see the pressure from Spain because when the United States does win the ball, Howell there is looking to go forward with her first pass, but there's so much pressure by Spain. The only option is to go backwards first. It allows Spain to get in their defensive shape and the U.S. to start over. They cannot find a quick outlet pass going forward to be dangerous when they do win that ball in midfield. Well, that will be the final action of a first half where the Spaniards have dominated going forward. They lead.